This video is brought to you by our patrons. If you want to make sure we can create more content like this, consider supporting us on our Patreon. Thank you. Hi, and welcome to Chapter 5 of Capitalism, Socialism, and Democracy by Schumpeter. We are now moving into Part 2 of the book, Can Capitalism Survive? And Chapter 5 is called The Rate of Increase of Total Output. So in this chapter, we will attempt to form a rational opinion on the economic and cultural performance of capitalism. One way to measure performance is by total output, although this is not a method without its flaws, because it's difficult to construct, leaves out several factors, etc. But it can give us a general idea of how the economy is doing. So Schumpeter looks at the average annual rate of growth from 1870 to 1930, and it's about 2% annually. And he uses this to predict the world in 1978. Keep in mind, I'm using the word predict loosely here. He's not actually making a prediction. We're just doing this as an exercise. So if it continues, if the economy continues growing at the same annual rate that it has been at Schumpeter's time of writing, we can expect the 1978 economy to be approximately 2.7 times the size of the 1928 economy. And if the population increases as expected, it should be about 160 million people by 1978. So if all these predictions are accurate, the income per head should roughly double in those 50 years, $650 or $1,300 in terms of 1928 purchasing power. There is, so long as we are discussing what the capitalist engine might do if left to itself, no reason to believe that the distribution of income or the dispersion about our average would in 1978 be significantly different from what it was in 1928. And Schumpeter says that this projection is only strengthened by the fact that output projections typically underestimate the development of things like new commodities. Usually these measurements are only focusing on the most standard types of goods, such as lumber or potatoes. But in fact, the development of new commodities or new technologies are the cornerstones of progress and the improvement of society. So the positive prediction here should actually understate all the good things that will happen in the future. The future being the time between 1928 and 1978. And when taking into account the financial gain at different levels of society, we can see that a great deal of this kind of progress benefits the lower classes. Verification is easy. There are no doubt some things available to the modern workman that Louis XIV himself would have been delighted to have yet was unable to have. Modern dentistry, for instance. On the whole, however, a budget on that level had little that really mattered to gain from capitalist achievement. Even speed of traveling may be assumed to have been a minor consideration for so very dignified a gentleman. Electric lighting is no great boon to anyone who has the money to buy a sufficient number of candles and to pay servants to attend to them. It is the cheap cloth, the cheap cotton and rayon fabric, boots, motor cars, and so on, that are the typical achievements of capitalist production, and not as a rule improvements that would mean much to the rich man. Queen Elizabeth owned silk stockings. The capitalist achievement does not typically consist in providing more silk stockings for queens, but in bringing them within reach of factory girls in return for steadily decreasing amounts of effort. And in addition, the capitalist process, not by coincidence, but by virtue of its mechanism, progressively raises the standard of life of the masses. It does so through a sequence of vicissitudes, the severity of which is proportional to the speed of advance. And finally, when judging the merits of capitalism, we should also look at what it provides indirectly. Schumpeter says we should give some credit to the capitalist system for social progress, because social progress was only able to take place after periods of improving economic conditions to the masses. 
when living or economic conditions improved, people had more time and life to use towards creating social progress. One evil Schumpeter says capitalism will not be able to solve, however, is the presence, the ever presence of unemployment. However, in a capitalist system, we can look at solutions to lessen the severity of the consequences of unemployment. Schumpeter is critical of some of the recent policies he witnessed in his time. Particularly, he is critical of the New Deal, which he says exasperated and prolonged the conditions of unemployment past what was necessary. And on that note, this chapter draws to a close. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit a like and subscribe, and we will be out soon with chapter six. Mm -hmm.